Hi, I'm Janice Reinholds Province, and this is a quick little tutorial on how to interpret the ABG. So we all know that there are several components of the ABG, the pH, the PO2, the PCO2, the bicarb, and the SAO2, as well as the base excess. The pH measures the hydrogen ion concentration in the blood, the normal range being 7.35 to 7.45, with that right there in the middle number being 7.4. So if we have too many hydrogen ions circulating around in our blood, that's going to cause an acidosis, and the pH is going to be less than 7.35. If we don't have enough hydrogen ions circulating around in our blood, then this is going to cause an alkalosis and our pH will go up above 7.45. So if our, um, if our pH is less than 7.35, then this is going to be an uncompensated acidosis. If it's greater than 7.45, then this is going to be an uncompensated alkalosis. So what are the determinants of blood pH? We have the respiratory system and the metabolic system. The respiratory system tends to make changes very quickly by increasing or decreasing our respiratory rate. And metabolic has to deal with the kidneys and that's a little bit slower of a process there. So when you think respiratory, think carbon dioxide. The normal CO2 on the ABG is 35 to 45. So think acid, respiratory, carbon dioxide, acid. And then when we talk about metabolic, think bicarb. The normal being 22 to 26. So metabolic, think bicarb, think an alkali or base. For CO2, let's talk about respiratory acidosis. So if we have an increase in our CO2 or the circulating acid in the blood, the CO2 on the blood gas is going to be greater than 45. For respiratory alkalosis, so this is the pH is bumped up, we're going to have a loss of acid, so the CO2 will be less than 35. When we talk about uh, bicarbonate or the HCO3, if we're going to talk about a metabolic acidosis, the pH is going to be less than 7.35, and we're going to have a loss of bicarb or a loss of base, so our bicarb on the ABG is going to be less than 22. If we have a metabolic alkalosis, the pH being greater than 7.45, we're going to have an increase in our bicarb or increase in the base. So the HCO3 will be greater than 26. All right, so summing that up, when you think respiratory, think CO2 on your ABG, think acid, the normal range being 35 to 45, the PCO2. And if we don't have enough circulating CO2, um, then we're going to have a respiratory alkalosis. So there's not enough acid to keep the pH down in the normal range. Whereas if we have too much acid circulating, greater than 45, we're going to have a respiratory acidosis. All right, on to metabolic. So when we say metabolic, think base, think bicarb. So the normal HCO3 on the blood gas is going to be 22 to 26. If we don't have enough base circulating, we're going to have a metabolic acidosis. If we have too much base, we're going to have a metabolic alkalosis that bumps up our pH. All right, let's look at a four-step process to tackle interpreting an ABG. Here's one example. We have a pH of 7.34, PCO2 of 50, and a bicarb of 24. All right, step one, let's look at the pH. Is it outside of the normal range? The pH in this case is 7.34. So does that fit the acidosis or the alkalosis criteria? It fits the acidosis criteria. And remember, if it's outside 7.35 or the 7.45 range, then it's going to be uncompensated. So that's the case here. Step two, we're going to look at the CO2, the acid. In this case, it's 50. Is it outside the normal range? So is does it fit the respiratory alkalosis or the respiratory acidosis criteria? And it fits the respiratory acidosis criteria. So if it were in the normal range, that would be adequate ventilation.
Step three, we're going to look at the bicarb, or the base. The base in this case is 24. Is it outside the normal range? Is it less than 22? Nope. Is it greater than 26? Nope. So it's within normal range. So this is normal. And then lastly, step four, we're going to look at the pH one more time and see if it's within the normal range to see if it's compensated or uncompensated. So in this case, again, it's 7.34. 7.4 is like our middle area, and you can see that it falls on the left side of the 7.35, so this is going to be uncompensated. It doesn't fall in that middle area of normal, 7.35 to 4.5. So this patient has an uncompensated respiratory acidosis. All right, let's talk about compensation. So there's um, two systems that compensate for blood gases, the renal and the respiratory. And the renal is rather slow about um, making changes. And it can do this either through retention or excretion, as well as the respiratory system. It can change the pH by <clears throat> increasing or decreasing the acid or the CO2 by retaining or excreting it. The body likes to have a normal pH. So let's do a couple examples. Here's a metabolic one. So when we have the words compensated metabolic acidosis, what does that mean? So compensated means that our pH is going to be within the normal range, but the acidosis tells us that it's going to be on the high or the low range of the pH. So acidosis is going to be on the low range. So a low normal pH, so it's compensated. It's within that 7.35 to 7.45, or in this case 7.35 to 7.4 or 3.9 range. And then metabolic tells us to look at which, um, which factor. The bicarb. So is it going to be up or is it going to be down? Is it too much base that makes an acidosis or is it too little base that makes an acidosis? It is too little base, right. And then how about the CO2? So like I said, the body likes to um, be normal. So what is it going to do about having a metabolic acidosis with the CO2? How is it going to compensate? it's going to decrease the amount of acid respiratory wise in order to compensate. So if we have a low CO2 and a low bicarb with a low normal pH, that's a compensated metabolic acidosis. Let's do another one. All right, compensated metabolic alkalosis. So the alkalosis tells us that the pH is going to be on the high end and that the compensated tells us that it's within that range of 7.41 to 7.45. All right, so metabolic tells us that we're going to look at what number for our problem? The bicarb. So if it's an alkalosis, does that mean that it's too much, a metabolic al alkalosis, too much base or too little base? It's going to be too much base. And then what is the body doing respiratory-wise to try to compensate for that metabolic al alkalosis? It's increasing the CO2 or increasing the acid in the system in order to normalize. All right, let's look at some respiratory um, problems. So we have a compensated respiratory acidosis. Acidosis tells us that it's going to be a pH that is less than the 7.4 and compensated tells us it's within the range of 7.35 to 7.39. So we have a low normal pH and then respiratory tells us to look at the CO2 number. So in order to have a respiratory acidosis, do we need more CO2 or less CO2? More CO2, good. And then what's the body doing to compensate for that respiratory acidosis? Is it going to hold on to base or bicarb or is it going to release it? It's gonna hold on to it. So we have an increase in our HCO3. All right. One more, a compensated respiratory alkalosis. So the alkalosis tells us that the pH is going to be on the side of 7.41 to 7.45 within the normal range. So it's going to be a high normal. And then if it's respiratory alkalosis, we're going to look at the CO2 
respiratory acid. So if it's an alkalosis, do we have too much acid or not enough acid creating the respiratory alkalosis? We don't have enough acid. And then what is the body doing to make up for it? Kidney-wise, what is it doing metabolically? It is going to, we're going to have a decrease in our bicarb. So that makes the compensated respiratory alkalosis. All right, we can also have mixed base disturbances. Um, both respiratory and metabolic abnormalities occur. And when this happens, we're going to use the same four-step process. So we're going to look at the pH, figure out if the patient is uh, acidic or alkalotic or basic. Is there too much or too little CO2? Is there too much or too little bicarb? All right, so let's look at a mixed acid-base disturbance. So let's tackle this one. If we have a pH that is too low, so less than 7.35, a CO2 that is too high, and a bicarb that is too low, what do we have going on here? So we know we have too much acid because the CO2 is elevated. We have too little base because the bicarb is low. So what does that lead to? So an increased CO2 we know that if we have too much acid, that's going to lead to an acidosis. Well, does that fit our pH of less than 7.35? Yes. And if we have not enough base, is that going to lead to a decreased um, pH or less than 7.35? It could as well. So in this case, we have a combined respiratory and metabolic acidosis. Here's another one. So if the pH is greater than 7.45 and the CO2 or the acid is low and the bicarb is high, we have too little acid, we have too much base, what does this lead to? So can not enough acid or CO2 cause a, an alkalosis? Absolutely. Can too much base cause an alkalosis? Absolutely. So we have a combined respiratory and metabolic alkalosis. All right, so let's do this one. Interpret this. A pH of 7.54, a CO2 of 27, and a bicarb of 29. What do we have going on here? So the pH, is it uh, within range 7.35 to 7.45? No, it's outside of it on the upper end, so that makes our patient alkalotic. Is it compensated? No. And how about our CO2 of 27? So we know the normal range is 35 to 45. So 27, that's too low. Not enough acid. Would that cause us to be alkalotic? Yes. And let's look at the bicarb of 29, normal being 22 to 26. So we have too much base. Is too much base going to cause us to be alkalotic? Yes. So what do we have going on here? We have a combined respiratory and metabolic alkalosis. All right, so interpreting ABGs is as easy as one, two, three, four. We're going to look at the pH first, decide if it's in the normal range of 7.35 to 7.45, figure out which side of 7.4 the pH value lands on, and decide if that we've got an acidosis or an alkalosis. Then we're going to look at the CO2, the acid, the respiratory component. Is it within range? Do we have too much acid, making us acidotic, or not enough acid, making us alkalotic? Then we're going to look at the bicarb. Do we have too much base? That'll be an alkalosis, metabolic alkalosis. Do we have not enough base? Then we're going to have a metabolic acidosis. And lastly, we're going to look and see if the pH is compensated or uncompensated. So if it's within the range of 7.35 to 4.5, which side of 7.40 does our pH land on? If it's 7.35 to 3.9, we have a compensated acidosis. If it falls on the 7.41 to 7.45 side, then we have a compensated alkalosis. All right, happy interpreting.